Hello everyone. In this video, we will talk about movement of inertia. Represented by the capital letter I, movement of inertia about a line is defined as the product of a mass m and the square of a distance from the given line. In the previous class, moments was used to find the coordinate of the centroid. The product of mass and its distance from the given line is called the first moment. Inertia is the second moment and is the property of an object that resists being set in motion. Inertia is the property of an object that describes that the object will remain at rest or at a constant velocity unless it is acted upon by an external force. So the um, formulas for inertia is given as m r square. So m is the the mass, and r is the radius of radiation, which corresponds to the center of mass in the that we actually mentioned in the previous video. And if you recall that we were talking about the moment uh, as m times the distance. And in this case, if we square the distance, time the mass will give us the inertia. In terms of calculus, we will have to uh, find the moment of inertia of an area with a constant density with respect to x and y axis. The formula is given as this. Okay, so I of uh, the inertia with respect to the y axis is equal to rho, which is the density uh, multiplied by the integral evaluated from the lower limit to the upper limit uh, this one is with respect to the y-axis all right so with respect to the y-axis and you notice that we are using the dx in this case dx is the vertical element so with vertical element we are talking about the um, upper and the lower limits as a and b so now you will see that with respect to certain uh, axis, the element that you are going to choose will be parallel to the axis of rotation. So in this case, you have the y-axis, and you are choosing dx, so dx is the element that is parallel to the axis of rotation. So it's very much similar to the shell method that we have done in previous class. So what I'm going to do is I will go over this formula with everyone uh, just to let you uh, see how we derive these formulas. I'm not going to go into the very details of it, but to demonstrate for you how we come up with these formulas right here. And from here, you can find that the, the radius of trajectory could be equal to the square root of i y divided by m. And the similarity for the uh, uh, are for the i-x as well. Again, i-x is the moment of inertia of an area of constant density with respect to the x-axis. All right. So if with respect to the x-axis, you are going to choose the element that is parallel to the axis of rotation. The dy is the element uh, which is horizontal, so it's parallel to the axis of rotation, which is the x-axis. So in this case, your integrand will be defined as the uh, as in terms of, of y, all right, okay, and your uh, upper and the lower limit will be the value of y. So again, I have it on here as the uh, uh, formulas to uh, review for everyone regarding the area between the curves. So we talk about the area between the curves. That means we are going to take the upper function minus the lower function. Or we take the right function, subtract the left function in this case. All right. So now let's, let's go to the next page. And I will uh, derive the formulas for the moment of inertia for an area for you. So we are talking about this uh, two functions intersect each other at this uh, point. All right. Okay. So let's uh, click this two point on here. So those are the point of intersection. Okay. So you see that I, I drew the elements here for everyone. So this element is the vertical element. So in this case, I will call this one uh, dx. Right? Okay. So this is dx because we are having a vertical element. And what I'm going to do is 
I will identify this function as y2 and this function as y1 because if you highlight this area so we are going to highlight the area that we are working with place your eyes within this area you realize that y2 is the upper function y1 is a lower function and we are going to choose a point on here i'm going to call right at the center i'm going to call this point as uh, xi and yi all right so it's very much similar to the initia that we are going to talk about in a minute so project it on here i have these two values so x uh, i and y i i might as well uh, label my x and y axis so y x axis all right so i'm going to define for you according to the element that i'm going to use right so this is the uh, vertical element and it's parallel to the axis of rotation so in this case i'm going to call this axis of rotation is the y axis all right okay so don't forget the element is parallel to the axis of rotation okay so let's talk about the area first so if i want to find the area then this will be equal to the integral from a to b of y2 minus y1 and we are going to integrate this in term of x all right so what is the definition of moment of inertia so moment of inertia is equal to the mass right and then we multiply that with the moment amps and then we square that all right okay so don't forget i'm talking about the uh, uh, axis of rotation is the y-axis in this case so i'm going to call this one as uh, iy so this is equal to so what is the mass the mass is the density multiplied by the area okay so the moment i'm in this case i'm calling it this one is the xi and then i'm going to square that so in this case i will have rho times the area times xi and then i square the xi okay so i'm going to substitute in here into the area the formulas to figure out uh, uh, the area of this uh, shape so this one right here all right so i'm going to put in his row and then i will multiply this by the integral from a to b of y2 minus y1 uh, and I multiply by the xi square and then dx. All right. So in general, what we are going to do is we are going to write rho times integral from a to b of x square y2 minus y1 and then integrate by the function of x. So this is my i y okay so don't forget the r the radius will be equal to the uh, moment of inertia with the uh, axis of rotation as y-axis divided by the mass all right so similar i will write i x will be rho okay times c to d in this case you know that you are going to use the horizontal element right so which is uh, parallel to the axis of rotation as the x-axis okay so the uh, um, x beside the i and the, the y beside the i this one indicate to you the axis of rotation so this one is the axis of rotation is the x-axis because it's parallel to the x-axis so i'm going to use this formulas here and i will write y square 
u is my x2 minus x1 and dy and similar uh, will be equal to the ix divided by the mass. So what we have in this case is we are going to um, work with the right function, subtract the left function, and then uh, our integrand will be in term of y. All right. So let's just uh, make a, a big um, reminder for everyone here. Okay. So we are going to talk about this is the mass. Okay. M. And then the uh, radius of generation is defined as r will be similar to this symbol right here okay so i'm going to give you the definition of r okay okay r is the distance from the center of mass to the axis of rotation. Okay. okay, so what you do is you locate the center of mass and from there you draw a line perpendicular to the axis of rotation that is your radius of gyration R. All right, and all the formulas uh, uh, identify for us here and I would like everyone to Make sure that we remember this. All right. Okay. So let's work with example. Okay. Example one. Okay. So I have a, a complete blank spade because I actually give myself a lot of space to write. However, I don't think I need that at all. Okay. So let's just um, continue with our example. So, how about I just uh, write the um, formula again on this page, okay? So, from A to B, so don't forget, our axis of rotation is the y-axis. And don't forget, it's always parallel, okay? Parallel to the axis of rotation. Okay. And IY is the moment of inertia with the axis of rotation as Y. <clears throat> so then in here, I will have uh, Y2 minus Y1 because I'm using the uh, vertical elements. And here I should have X squared and DY. And I'm going to draw for everyone here is the axis of rotation. And this is, all right, so here's my y, here's x, and how do I define, here's my r, okay. Then what I have next is the ix, so that could be rho from c to d, y squared, and x2 minus x1, and here's dx, all right? So in this case, I should have it as and then here's y, here's x. And then from the center of mass, I will So this is my R, all right? Okay, so let's continue with our example. So example one, find the moment of inertia and the radius R of an area with constant density over the first quadrant bounded by Y squared equal to one minus X with respect to the X axis. Okay, so it's very important in this case that we remember if we said with respect to the x-axis, that means you are going to use the formula ix, 
All right, so I will write it down right away. I x equal to rho from c to d of y square, and then we should have uh, x2 minus x1 and uh, dy, right? Okay, so that's the formulas that I need to use uh, in this case because they are giving us the axis of rotation. So I'm going to draw the axis of rotation here. And I remember that working with the moment of inertia, my elements will have to be parallel to the axis of rotation. So in this case, first of all, let's highlight the area that we have to work with. So right here is the area that I have to work with because it's only in the first quadrant. And then the axis of rotation is parallel uh, the uh, with the uh, element that we are going to use. So I'm going to use this element. So it's the horizontal element. Okay, so just make a note here. Okay, note again. Uh, element that we are going to use is parallel to the axis of rotation. All right. So in this case, I'm going to use dy, and um, I, I'm going to identify the uh, y2, I mean the um, the x2 and the x1. All right. Okay. So why right here I have um, uh, y square equal to one minus x. Okay. So right here y, y one minus x. Okay, and then uh, I am going to uh, take the, this is my uh, right functions right here. So I need to make that into uh, x equal to 1 minus y square because you need to solve for x. Okay, so that your function is in term of y. And in this case, I'm going to identify this as my x2. Okay, because you are taking the right function, subtract the left function. So your left function should be this one. Okay, so that means you are touching the y-axis in this case. So what is the formulas for the y-axis? That means x equal to 0. So my x1 is equal to 0. So what I'm going to have is ix in this case is equal to rho okay from c to d of y square and you are going to take uh, 1 minus y square subtract 0 because this is your x2 subtract your x1 and now you see your integrand everything is in term of, of y and what you need to do next is to find the upper and the lower limit which is c and d so this is actually quite obvious all right okay so if it's the first quadrant okay then what i'm going to do is you can see right away what point is supposed to be but the the way to uh, solve it will be this okay to find c and d okay you are going to let x2 equal to x1. So that means I am going to have 1 minus y square equal to 0. So 1 equal to y square. So in this case, uh, y should be equal to the plus or minus square root of 1. So y equal to uh, plus 1 or y equal to minus 1. All right. So in this case, because we are only work with the first quadrant, therefore, uh, I will have c equal to 0 and d equal to 1. So the point 0 and 1 in this case. Okay. So now let's just substitute it into our integral and we are going to integrate. Okay, so I should indicate here we only work with first quadrant. Therefore, my c is equal to 0. So now I will have ix equal to rho from 0 to 1. And what I'm going to do is I will multiply 
uh, y square into what I have inside the bracket okay so if you take y square multiplied by this you should have y square subtract y to the exponent 4 and now we just have to integrate okay so now I will have ix equal to rho and I multiply this with okay integral of y square is one third y to the exponent 3 integral of y to the exponent 4 is negative 1 fifth uh, y to the exponent 5 and I have to apply fundamental theorem in this case so that will be rho and I multiply by f of 1 subtract f of 0 all right okay go on to the next page but I realize that this one is a zero for sure, right? Because you have y in each of these terms, you substitute zero in here, your f zero will be equal to zero. Okay, on the next line, I will write it like this. ix equal to rho, okay, I apply uh, fundamental theorem so it will be one third of one q subtract one over five of one to the exponent five okay during this calculation i know that i have uh, one third subtract one fifth so i should have um i x equal to rho times two over 15 so we go 2 rho over 15 so we found that already so the i x is equal to this value and what they ask us is they ask us to find the uh, the mass right okay so let's go back the question asking us to find the moment of inertia we also have to find r of an area with constant density covered by the first quadrant with respect to the x-axis. So we already find the ix, all right? So here is the ix that we have to find. Then we also have to find rx, okay? And we rx is equal to the square root of ix divided by the mass, okay? So that means we have to find mass, right? before we can find the rx. So that's why I was saying earlier that um, now we are going to find the mass. So that means we have to find the mass. All right. So to find the mass, we need to remember, so let's write our rx equal to the ix divided by m, and then m is actually rho times the area as we uh, have indicated earlier okay so now we have to find the area first before we can uh, time this with rho okay so the area is equal to the formula is given to us as uh, uh, c to d x2 minus x1 uh, dy all right so then a is equal to the integral from 0 to 1 of 1 minus y square dy okay so in this case i should have y subtract one third of y to the exponent 3 integrate from 0 to 1 and i should indicate that it should be f 1 minus f of 0 and i know that the f 0 is equal to 0 in this case all right So, <clears throat> excuse me, I just want to take a sip of water before I continue. So now, our area equal to, um, 
substitute the value in so 1 minus 1 third of 1 to the exponent 3 so in this case I should have 2 thirds okay so I still give myself a lot of space here so now the mass the area is equal to 2 thirds right the area is equal to 2 thirds so mass m is equal to rho times area so therefore I will have rho times 2 thirds so I will have 2 rho over 3 okay so now we are going to find the rx okay so rx is equal to ix over m so therefore I'm going to write ix is uh, I found it as 2 rho over 15 now I divide it by the mass with just uh, 2 rho over 3 okay so don't forget that we are dividing the two fractions so I will multiply and I flip the other one over so now you see this and this cancel out okay so now Rx is equal to um, the square root of 3 over 15 okay so if you want to simplify your answer that means you have to rationalize the denominator and everything then uh, it will be equal to okay so what we have is the square root of 1 over 5 which is uh, you simplify this to uh, the numerator and the denominator so this should be 1 which should be 5 and then should be equal to the square root of 1 over the square root of 5 rationalize the denominator you should have 1 over multiplied by square root of 5 times this by square root of 5 so you should have square root of 5 over 5 as the final answer okay so rx is equal to root 5 over 5 which is the uh, radius that we have to look for and uh, our uh, um, ix is the moment of Nisha about the x-axis is equal to 2 rho over 15 so in this uh, lesson I have uh, a few more example but I will leave my next example here for the next video all right so I think we should make a conclusion so I x is equal to 2 rho over 15 and uh, x is equal to root 5 over 5. Alright, alright, thank you.